live from Hollywood, where plastic surgery is considered a sacrament, it's the comedy spectacular, Thou Shalt Laugh, featuring the amazing talents of Thor Ramsey, Jeff Allen, Michael Jr., Teresa Roberts Logan, Taylor Mason, Gilbert Esquivel, and the village idiot, Joby Sad. And now, please welcome your host, two-time Emmy winner and star of Everybody Loves Raymond, Patricia Heaton. Tonight, you're going to see some of the best and brightest comedians on the planet. And what's more, they're all Christians. That is correct. <laughs> all Christians, all been baptized. They have all their shots. They... <laughs> and, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people think that um, the words Christian and comedian couldn't possibly be in the same sentence. And if you are one of those people, I think you're gonna be in for a big surprise because if you can get through this concert and you're not laughing your head off, clearly you're going to hell. <laughs> um, or purgatory. <laughs> Catholics invented that for a reason. Um, so, anyway, let's get started. Um, gosh, our first comedian is brilliant, and he's jaded and sarcastic and cynical, so clearly he's going to be a huge success in this town. Please welcome Thor Ramsey. <laughs> You don't have to stop, sure. How many people? By applause, people in love, by applause, people in love. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Love, love will ruin your life. Yes, it will. Love can ruin your life. Because when, when you're in love with somebody, you're concerned about their happiness. And when they are miserable, welcome to the show. My advice, if you're not married, Marry someone you don't love. <laughs> yeah, and when they get upset, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Just be practical. I have a five-year-old daughter. My wife and I have a five-year-old daughter, and uh, nothing negative to say about being a parent, man. It was like, it was like an invisible cord running from my daughter to me. It's just like a constant supply of joy. It's like I love my daughter Eden so very much. And uh, thank you. My complaint is with the toy manufacturers. <laughs> you tried to open a toy lately? <laughs> I bought my daughter a stuffed animal. It was strapped to that box like it was going to the electric chair. <laughs> like tape and twisty ties and barbed wire and a guard tower. <laughs> hey, Dad, I want to play with my dolly. Honey, apparently your dolly's on death row. They put some nice clear plastic on the front. You can visit your doll anytime you like. <laughs> Hi, doll. I can't wait till you get out. <laughs> I said, I can't wait till you get out. <laughs> what cracks me up is that strapping up these toys, twisting, tying, strapping these toys in, this is someone's job. <laughs> like, who does this? Where is this done? Don't ever tell me elves are happy. <laughs> I can only imagine this being done by someone at a state correctional facility somewhere. <laughs> if I'm not going anywhere, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> well, uh, evaluate this with me, if you will. Um, I'm in a Christian bookstore the other day, and uh, I'm not making this up. They're selling Christian breath mints. Have you seen these? They're, they're called testaments. 
I tried some. I took them back. I'm like, these aren't working. I'm still cussing. <laughs> Not sure when a breathman becomes Christian, but these were falsely converted, okay? <sighs> that breath is evil, okay? <laughs> First, I think the most effective tool for marketing Jesus has been the fish symbol that we put on the back of our cars, the fish symbol. And uh, you may have seen a reaction to this. Darwin has put feet on the fish symbol, wrote Darwin on the inside. In reaction to this, we made a fish symbol eating their fish symbol. <laughs> Which I think is the Christian thing to do. <laughs> oh, I am just, I'm happy to be alive, actually. I'm happy to be alive. I was in Bismarck, North Dakota last week. Yeah, don't applaud. You don't know what I'm going to say yet, so don't applaud yet. Uh, it was 60 below. 60 below. I'm not making that up. Bismarck, North Dakota, 60 below. North Dakota is the only state where you can get an ice cream headache from breathing. It's 60 below. There are only 680,000 people in the entire state. Move. There are other places to live, people. We can still make use of North Dakota. My suggestion, build a big fence around North Dakota, make that a prison. <laughs> yeah. We could literally have a state penitentiary that way. <laughs> but I shared a shuttle from the airport to the hotel, 60 below. I get in the shuttle, I'm like, I am so cold. And the guy in the shuttle goes, ah, oh, it's barely freezing. Is that a comforting phrase, really? It's barely freezing. That's kind of like, you okay to drive? I'm hardly drunk. <laughs> How are things at home? I seldom have stitches. You see, hardly, barely, seldom, they all mean the thing is still happening. You're somewhat stupid. And if you ask them outright, how can you stand this cold? You know, the common answer you get? You get used to it. <laughs> That's a lie. You do not get used to that kind of weather. I know, because when I was there, I got pulled over by a cop. Neither one of us got out of the car. <laughs> step out of the car, please. You step out of the car! <laughs> you step out. You get Step out of the car. Look out, I have a speaker. <laughs> oh, I got the vent. Can you hear me through the vent? <laughs> Just slow down. <laughs> and if the weather doesn't kill you driving in, it will. Because uh, same week, I'm outside of Grafton, North Dakota part of my Tundra tour. And I'm on a two-lane road outside of Grafton, uh, passing a semi, 60 below, hit a little patch of ice as I'm going to get back in my lane. I'm spinning out of control in front of the semi, and he's honking at me. <laughs> like I'm goofing off. <laughs> Look what I can do, Mr. Semi. <laughs> Try this, semi man. <laughs> And a semi honking at you, to me, sounds like, you know, dead, dead, you're dead, dead, you're dead, dead, you're dead, 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 dead. That's, that's, that's stupid. They don't honk like that. <laughs> well, they do that thing, don't they? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I don't, I don't get that anyway. I don't know if there are any truckers. My dad was a trucker. I still don't understand the whole, you're pulling on a rope. We have horns now, okay? What kind of ancient cowboy technology is this? We got like a rope tied to a duck's leg. And crack, crack. Buy a horn, man. That didn't really sound like a duck either, did it? Oh, no. There you go. So. Had to get a new driver's license, too. Man, I don't know the last time you've done that. Got a new driver's license. I'm at the DMV, and I'm, I don't know the last time you've gone, but they, they have lines. And I'm in line, 
So I finally get up to the lady who's going to take my picture. And I'm making this up. She actually says this for my license. She's going, she goes, aren't you going to smile? I'm like, this, this is for identification purposes, isn't it? If I get pulled over, this is how I'm going to look. I want to make sure they recognize me. <laughs> so you take my picture, I'll drive my car, that will be our relationship. <laughs> I didn't say that to her out loud. <laughs> I thought about saying it. I didn't say it aloud, that would have been rude. It would not have been the Christian thing to do. I think it's much more Christian for me to come here and talk about her. <laughs> that's, I think that's the Christian way. <laughs> Then I saw a guy, uh, had a bumper sticker on his car, said Hallmark Cards. I thought to myself, how convenient, because that's the next thing I want to talk about. <laughs> I love the looks on some of your faces on that one. So, uh, <laughs> My wife and I have decided this. Uh, we've decided out of all the holidays, Mother's Day cards, hardest cards to buy, because they're also fake. Because all Mother's Day cards say something on them in big flowery letters, like, to the most wonderful mother. Why can't you just make a card that said, you did the best you could? <laughs> I love you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a card back. Yeah, and your disappointment too. <laughs> Happy birthday. Now I would say, generally speaking, uh, greeting cards are much more important to women than they are men, but guys, if you're gonna go to the trouble of buying a greeting card, read it. <laughs> Bought my wife what I thought was a very nice Valentine's Day card. On the front, it had the traditional heart. Around the heart, it had all that <laughs> And then inside, it said, Happy Valentine's Day. And the Y had that. It had the double looped Y. It's a sign of a good greeting card. That. I hand it to her. It's like, how do you go wrong with a card like that? I hand it to her. She opens it and starts laughing. Inside it said, to the man I love. <laughs> I had a good childhood myself. I had a good childhood. Grew up in a small town in uh, Nebraska. I grew up in Nebraska. Yeah. Dakota City, Nebraska. Town of 1,503 people. 25,437 German shepherds. It's my impression of Dakota City in the evening. It's two in the morning. What is this dog so desperately trying to communicate at two in the morning? What's he out there trying to say? What's he out there? Help me, I'm trapped in the yard. I can't get out. You gotta get me out. Get me out. Oh, 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 Shut up! Ever actually open your window, yell at the neighbor's dog, shut up, dog! Like the dog's down there going, my bad, my bad. I'm, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize the time. I, I'm a dog. <laughs> no, you get his attention, he'll be right at your window, you know, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me! And the other dogs in the neighborhood, they hear him in the distance and join in, help me! So the barking thing bothers me. I'll share this with you before I get out of here. The barking thing bothers me because night is generally when I sleep. I don't know what your habits are. I'm a night sleeper, all right? I love it. Sleep, I just, I love it. Sleep, mm, I love it. Sleep, love it. I sleep, mm, love it. I love to sleep. Man, I have dreams about taking naps. I love and I'm one of these people, I have to have total silence, complete darkness, so I can't fall asleep at night. And I tell you something, you people who snore, you sandblasters of the night, <laughs> you callers of the hogs, how do you people make these noises, these sound, where's this stuff come from? 
It's like you're laying there in a coma with that constant reminder, I'm asleep. You are not. I'm asleep. You are not. I'm asleep. You are not. Even the dog's outside going, roll over! God bless you guys. Thanks a lot. My name's Thor Ramsey. I love you guys. Thanks a lot. Good night. How about that, Thor Ramsey? That's fabulous. That's fabulous. I, I, I just have a little bone of contention. You know, he, he's got a... He's got a five-year-old and has nothing negative to say about kids. And that's, that's great. That's coming from a dad with one kid. <laughs> Let's hear from the ladies who've had four C-sections. <laughs> when I was backstage, I realized that our next entertainer and I have a lot in common. We're both from the Midwest. We both came out to Hollywood to pursue our dreams of being in the entertainment industry, both on major hit sitcoms, have multiple Emmys, are adored worldwide. Oh, wait, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I guess God had a different plan for his life. Um, Please welcome Michael Jr. All right, man, we're gonna have some fun. Um, so uh, I just I just got married, which is which is cool, right? Uh, <laughs> You ever been to a surprise wedding? <laughs> no, I'm glad, I'm real glad that I got, I got married because now you don't got a date no more. Well, you, you're not supposed to, you know that, right? You're not. <laughs> but now not having a date is really, really cool, right? Because some of the women were materialistic, right? I just asked this lady if she wanted to go out and she tried to subliminally use words to figure out what type of vehicle I could afford. I was like, so you want to go out? She said, well, maybe we can go on some sort of expedition. <laughs> I mean, if you can navigate your way <laughs> to pick me up. I wasn't spending no money on her, so I was like, oh, that's cool, because if you go with me <laughs> to the fiesta, <laughs> I'd be more than happy to be your escort. And now comedy is so cool, I get, to, I get to travel, right? And I'm noticing some of the airports don't have enough security. One of them didn't have a real metal detector. It was just a lady standing there with an attitude. <laughs> he looked like he got something. <laughs> Beep. Then they're gonna stop me, excuse me, Michael Jr., we're gonna have to use a wand on you. I was like, all right, that's cool, I'll spread my arms out. This little dude named Juan came over and started frisking me. <laughs> Everybody in Los Angeles drinks bottled water. I'm not paying for no water. It's free. And they try to tell me the California tap water is bad for you. I've been drinking the tap water since I moved here. I haven't noticed any problems with me. Not to mention, I've been drinking the tap water since I moved here. I haven't noticed any problems with me. I get strange questions asked. I mean, somebody walked up to me and was like, so, Michael Jr., are you pro-gay? What? what? <laughs> no, I'm not pro-gay. Or amateur gay either. <laughs> I 
I didn't even know they had a league. The thing I'm like most about doing comedy, right? It's, um, I used to have this thing called a, um, uh, a job, right? Um, <laughs> I was a cashier at a gas station, but that didn't mean that I wasn't a comedian, right? This guy walked in who clearly had on a hairpiece. I'm just doing my job, right? He's like, okay, sir, you got a soda pop to. <laughs> Gasoline. $59.77, and uh, how are you going to pay? <laughs> then then this, this big lady walked in, well, the, the swollen lady walked in, right? <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong with being big, but she had a bad attitude. She came in there complaining. What took you so long to authorize the pump? I can't believe it took you that long. And I started to explain. I was like, yeah, I was busy, okay. I had a whole bunch of, I was trying to, then I just stopped and looked at her. And I was like, yo, um, sorry about your weight. So I quit that job. <laughs> they wanted me to get him a two weeks notice. I was like, your boss, two weeks from now, you're gonna notice I ain't been here in two weeks. <laughs> so now in comedy, all I do basically is just watch people and pay attention to how we respond to things, right? Like if you've been listening to somebody talk and it seems as if the conversation is almost over. Then they start up a whole new topic. Did I ever tell you about the time? You're like, I thought you was leaving. <laughs> or the pastor at church in closing. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time? <laughs> Did I tell you what time the game? Come on, pastor. I watch everybody too, like college students. Take somebody who goes to a nice school, let's say like University of Southern California. Ask them a school to go to. See, there they go. Ask them a school to go to, you get a nice, quick answer. What school you go to? USC. New York University, you get a nice, quick answer. What school you go to? NYU. Ask somebody to go to community college. You get a much longer response, don't you? What, what school you go to? Well, see right now, um, <laughs> What I'm doing, I'm gonna get a couple credits, right? Then my financial aid is supposed to come through. Then um, my cousin gonna let me use his books and then I'm gonna transfer, man. And for me, when I was in school, my teacher tried to tell me I had ADD, right? Which stands for attention deficit. Hey, it's a nice necklace you got on right there. So. Sometimes I would read a book, right? I would open it up and I would look at the words and the, the letters would get like mixed. They would get like, like, like scrambled. They tried to tell me I was less distic. <laughs> okay, um, it's okay. You might be working on one joke and another joke is on the way. Tell you what to do. What you do is you just grab the second joke and put it in your pocket. <laughs> Later on, you will have a treat. <laughs> you might forget the joke is there. <laughs> then you'll be at the store saying, hold on, dude, I got the change. Let me get the change. Let me get the change. <laughs> <laughs> One. I love doing comedy. I was doing a show at uh, Hermosa Beach at the Comedy Magic Club, right? So I leave, I leave and I'm walking to my car and it's getting a little cold, a little dark outside. So I'm thinking, let me hurry up to get to where I need to be. So I start jogging. 
Then this white lady with her little jogging outfit on came around the corner about 20 feet in front of me. We jogging in the same direction now. <laughs> then she looked back. <laughs> she started jogging faster. So I looked back too. I didn't see anything back there. <laughs> if a white person scared of it, Michael Jr. scared of it too. <laughs> so I started jogging faster. After she looked back again, she took off in full stride. This time I didn't even look back. <laughs> I also kicked in the gears. I could have easily passed her up, but I'm thinking, no, I can't just lead this defenseless lady out here by herself. <laughs> Whoever back there going to get her. <laughs> so I yelled up to her, is that as fast as you can run? I got to run too, I'm Michael Jr. Did I ever tell you about the time? <laughs> Before I got married to my beautiful wife, and uh, I was a single dad of three. Right now I got, I got four kids, it's, it's really, really a blessing. But uh, I was a single dad of, of three, right? And it was a lot of work. I thought it would be easy. Like my sixth grader came home with some math homework, right? She wanted me to help her. I'm thinking sixth grade math? Cool, you know. How hard could that be? <laughs> How many apples could Sally possibly have? <laughs> she asked me to help her write a polynomial. <laughs> <laughs> Sally had a pile of Oreos, what you? All of a sudden, I'm paying for a tutor, right? Twice a week. First, you go on Tuesdays, and on Thursdays, I go. <laughs> and my first grader comes home, right? It's picture day, and the pictures are expensive, right? But she had a note that says she can bring an idol from home, like a teddy bear or a rose, to make the picture more personable, right? For that much money, I sent her to class with her brother and sister. I think you go. <laughs> And then my son, I don't know how many, if you've ever been around like a four-year-old before, they ask a lot of questions. Question after question after, man, y'all know nothing. <laughs> you've been here for four years. <laughs> We're in a doctor's office, right? And the lady across from us just starts nursing her baby. And my son looked at her, then looked at me. I'm trying to ignore him. <laughs> he looked at her, he looked at me. This is when I find out he don't even know how to whisper. <laughs> what is the baby doing to the lady, daddy? I gotta explain in front of all these strangers, and they all got a vein in their neck from holding in laughter. <laughs> so what you saw was natural. See, women have these, uh, these, these, these breasts, and um, he said, what's a breast? I was like, man, it's, it's like a container to hold milk. <laughs> he said, what's a container? I was like, man, I don't know nothing. My son is so smart. I mean, it's just like brilliant, right? Gathering what he told me a little while back, we had a burglary. Somebody broke into where we live. They didn't steal anything. Nobody got hurt, but gathering from what he said, apparently they broke in and um, 
They peed in his bed. <laughs> they just peed in his bed, man. And upon further investigation, they, I found out they also peed in a pile of Spider-Man pajamas on the side of the refrigerator. <laughs> Awesome moments, though. Awesome fathers, you know you get that father-son moment. It's like a, my son looks at me out of nowhere, and he just said to me, Dad, I want to be a doctor. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Then he said, or a dinosaur. <laughs> Michael Jr., I love you. So here to tell you more about happy couples, Jeff Allen. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm uh, blessed with uh, teenagers. And um, yeah, I'm just glad to be in another state right now. So. <laughs> Here's a typical conversation I have with my 18-year-old. Last August, right before school starts, he comes to me. Says, I think I'm old enough to buy my own school clothes. Thought about it, I said, you know, I think you're right. Then we stare at each other for a minute. He says, what? So I said, what? This is an actual conversation. I'm doing it from memory. I didn't even have to write it down. Then he says, I need some money. Like I'm a moron and missed something. I thought you wanted to buy your clothes, not go to the mall and pick them out. He says, whatever. That's the word. Every time I hear it, I want to boink him right in the eyes. All right, so I give him money. I send him to the mall. I said, the deal is you got to show me what you bought. Now he comes out modeling the jeans he bought. If you've seen the jeans these kids, it comes out of the bedroom, 60 yards of denim hanging off his body. First time my wife washed them, she threw her back out, dragging them over to the dryer. And he's modeling them. His underwear's up here somewhere. The pants are sagging down there. And they don't walk anymore, kids. They waddle. That's what he does. He waddles. You know, like when you're coming out of the bathroom looking for toilet paper. That's the way they walk. So he goes, yo, 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 pops. And he says, what do you think? I said, oh, man, I'm glad you asked. I think we're going back to the mall, Snoop Droopy George. That's what I think. Trust me, I believe teenagers are God's revenge on mankind. It's if God himself looked down and said, hey, let's see how they like it to create someone of their own image who denies their existence. Because I have looked, nowhere in the Bible does it mention how old Satan was when he rejected God's authority. My guess would be 18. <laughs> I'm telling you. He caught me in the hallway about a month ago. This is what he says to me. Hey, I need your opinion on something. 